And I hope there's some surprises for you, or some, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> it's a good start. Uh, I hope there's some- He meant to knock the water over, yeah, 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 but you all thought it was an accident, but he meant to knock the water over, yeah, 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 art is a lie, nothing is real. Bo Burnham is a master of deconstruction. He is able to take many traditional pieces of life and put them on display through an absurdist lens, and communicate to the audience the inherent flaws in many parts of pop culture. He focuses on things like race, Straight white men I know the road looks tough ahead The women want rights The gays want kids What? Pop music But if you search for moral wisdom In Katy Perry's lyrics Then kill yourself It won't be pain Train. Sexuality. When did my mother first describe gay sex to me? Good question. I was eight years old. I was eight years old. She brought me into the dining room. She sat right across the table from me. She said, do you know how your father and I love each other? I said, of course. You and dad love each other more than two people in the world could possibly love each other. She said, well, two men can love each other in the exact same way that your father and I love each other. She said, what happens when two men love each other like that? <laughs> what they do is they, uh, they take off all their clothes, um, they get into bed, <laughs> and they shit on the Bible! Poetry. This poem is a little bit sappy, a little bit romantic, so we'll get it out of the way now, and uh, we will go back to the, uh, whoops, the, uh, the dirty stuff, you know, everyone loves at a late show or whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, it's called I Fuck Sluts. Sluts! Sluts! I fuck sluts! Sluts get fucked when I fuck sluts. No ifs, ands, and or buts. I fuck sluts. I fuck sluts. Nice girls are nice, but no good for nut sucking. They'll need a serene night to green light a butt fucking. But that'd be easy with sleazy old slut fucking booed the nice girls. Praise be to slut fucking. I have a list. A list, yes, a list of all the sluts I've missed. I've never fucked or sucked these sluts, and thus my nuts are fucking pissed. So when I fuck the lucky slut, my nut removes her from the list. Another dumb cum bucket struck from my nut sucking, suck it, slut, slut fucking bucket list. <laughs> yes, you hear the influences Chaucer, Keats, Pages are blank, I know it. Why am I lying to you? Sluts can be white, black, brown, pink, or almond. They can be skinny with big tits or be skinny with small ones. Sluts can be perky, preppy, or posh with their brains and their clothes all shrunk from the wash. Excuse me? <laughs> but other sluts are pretty and funny and smart. These sluts can lift all your thoughts from your dick to your heart. They can talk about science, music, or art. They can put you together. Or they can pull you apart, but don't trust these sluts. Don't. Don't you dare, the force you trust them and love them and care, and then they'll be gone and then you'll be aware of that hole in your heart that that dumb slut left there. Thank you very much. An improv comedy. I'm trying to work on my improv. My show is very planned uh, to the word, you know, to the gesture. And I'm trying to break out of that. I want to make something brand new for every show that only a few people get to experience. What's your name, man? Rob. Rob? All right. I'm gonna try to make up a song about Rob off the top of my head. This might not work. Fuck. Bo had sex with Rob's. Mom. Bo had sex with Rob's. But Burnham is simultaneously creating new comedic ideals for the audience to admire at the same time. Deconstruction and irony can be very dangerous. If everything is viewed as fake and paper thin, then there is no reason to trust anything. This is one of the inherent flaws of postmodernism, which irony is directly based off of. Postmodernism is essentially a distrust towards any grand narrative or absolute truth, which leads people to question everything around them. This, in turn, leads to people tearing down anything that they can find. They pull back the curtain and find the wizard operating all the machines. But once everything is torn down, there is nothing to believe in anymore. It leads to self-aware, ironic bits that are claiming to be for the people, while at the same time selling out the very people that it's claiming to be a part of. Will I have time to explore? What the fuck are you doing? I'm... I'm in a fashion art film. It's a commercial. Come on, I got you coffee. Let's go. 
I want values, like values. I just I don't want the cool, hip, comedy, ironic crowd to hide behind their irony so they can do bullshit. To hide behind, well, none of this shit matters anyway, so I might as well do all these commercials and all this vapid bullshit. Burnham isn't the first person to have this idea either. David Foster Wallace, a popular writer in the 1990s and early 2000s, had similar ideas about irony and its potential danger years ago. The problem is I think postmodernism has to a large extent run its course. The biggest thing for me about that was interesting about postmodernism is that it was the first text that was highly self-conscious. The, the, the problem though is now is that a lot of the shticks of postmodernism, irony, cynicism, irreverence, are now part of whatever it is that's enervating in the culture itself, right? Burger King now sells hamburgers with you gotta break the rules. Burnham's comedy is taking away the idea of a performer and stripping back the covers, but it is also attempting to build up a new system. People love the idea of a performer, of someone above them that they can look up to. If we kill all our idols, then why should we bother trying it all? Burnham is destroying himself and then creating a new path at the same time. And that's what makes his comedy not only funny, but truly philosophical as well. It's a performance that destroys and builds simultaneously. That's why Bo Burnham is such a great comic.